of Business, and I am Jamie Thurston Weingart. This is a show about entrepreneurship, but not just the case of glamorizing entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs and making it look good, but what are the struggles in entrepreneurship? Because I'm sure you either thought of a business idea, running a business, or know somebody that wants to go into business. And today we have an amazing guest in the studio. This is Imtiaz Art. Hi, Jamie. Oh, yes, and Imtiaz has been doing the most when it comes to food, when it comes to cooking, when it comes to being successful. So I want to get through to his journey and for him to share his journey with us. Nice, nice. Let me get some, who is Imtiaz Art right now? Okay, so I am Imtiaz Art, and I've started my foodie journey, I think, on Come Dine With Me. Mm. So, so that... what I know, <laughs> you've been given probably one of the highest scores, if not the highest, for South African. Yes, that Come is Dine correct. With me. And that I think is amazing. For those that don't know what Come Dine With Me is, it's a show where people get together, um, different groups of, I would say, home cooks Four or people. entertainers. And you have guests come through. I'm sorry, I'm advertising another show here, <laughs> but that's also another business. But for you to go on to TV to invite people into your home and then cook for them, yes. and then be told that you are one of the best at doing this in South Africa is quite an achievement. It From there, I know that you've been doing some more things around food, and you've been on yeah. featured on more shows. So that was my break into the foodie industry, basically. Like I've always had a passion for food, mm -hmm. like that genuine love for food and entertaining so obviously come dining was the next nice. best thing to do with that i discovered that i'm actually really good at this and maybe i should pursue more of these tv shows mm -hmm. i was doing this while i was employed though so i was yeah that is kind of a, a job yeah you to do because you were actually having a full-time job i had a full-time job right? and you're working media and i was working in media which is all the media thing puts, <laughs> the media thing puts together and shows that but having a full-time job but then i mean on to a different direction because your full-time job wasn't and hasn't got anything to do no, say, with food. Absolutely nothing. So this was a case of having a job but chasing your dream. Completely. So from, from being this amazing people in Come Down With Me, what other shows and, and accolades do you have? You so know? since Come Down With Me, I became a finalist on the Taste Master South Africa. Okay. I went on last year to Onset, which is an Afrikaans <laughs> cooking show. Nice. And I basically just appeared a few times on Afternoon Express for like a few recipes and things like that. So it was, it was that that propelled me into the food industry. Mm -hmm. And then while having a, a full-time job and a part-time job as a bartender. Wait, so you had three jobs basically. Well, two jobs basically. Two jobs and a, and a side passion. And a side hustle as well, like the bartending. And what was the reason for the, the multiple jobs? That's interesting. It's just starting out. I was an intern when I started at Media 24. And the bartending helped with, you know, income because it's a hassle out there. You've been that hassle. I've been that hassle. You've been that been, hassle. You've been <laughs> entrepreneurship mindset from the start. All the time. Okay. I always feel like if you really want something and I like the finer things in life, <laughs> as we all do, I work for it. Like I've been told that if you want something nice, you go out and you work for it. And you appreciate it more as well. I think that's a lot so of I've, always, I've always had and that mentality. Learn from that of if you want to go get it. Because the, the only person that's stopping you really is yourself. Is you. Yeah. But... This, this whole thing, so in your job itself, you start, you start off as an intern. Yes, so I started off as an intern, and then I got the permanent position. Mm -hmm. so Continued with the bar as well, because I was like, well, if I could do it as an intern, I can surely do it less hours as a full-time employee. Mm -hmm. It never really conflicted with one another. It actually worked out perfectly for me. Nice. I still had time to have a social life, which some people found like really odd, like how did they have one job and not have social life. How are you juggling? Some, yeah, I would say some people just have their 9 to 5. Yeah. And they can't cope with social life. You here running 9 to 5 job, getting promoted to a 9 to 5 job, which yes. means you're doing a good job there. But you're still doing your side job of working in the boss. And, and how's then, that? So you see you lowered your hours when you were doing... Media when 24. I started doing Media 24, yeah. yeah. But I can definitely see how you still got all the skills from being in the bar. And that can also tie into your food passion. It did, actually. So it started with Mixology. And I really, really love cocktails. So I played around with that, and on my social media feeds, people like really wanted more and more, and that's when I played around with recipe development a bit. So I made my own recipes, did some fusions, and I found that this is actually something that I quite like. That's quite interesting. See, you didn't have any professional Nothing. food things. You just naturally became the best at it in South Africa. <laughs> I wouldn't say the best, but I, I, I really love what I do, and I feel like when you doing something out of passion, it's a different sort of... Mm career choice it's more i just love what i'm doing it's yeah, it really does i think and that definitely shows in your careers um if i go back to your to your main, to your main job so you went from 
any intern getting promoted to getting promoted at Media 24 to being retrenched last year. And that's the situation that happened. Now, so that's, that's what happened. Your, your entrepreneurship journey. That's where it started. That turn. I want to talk about your business now. So you got to station Media 24. You now started your own food business. Well, it's basically me as the brand. I am my own brand. So with lockdown and with retrenchment, it was the worst thing that could have possibly happened to me and everybody else that had happened to in South Africa, in the world. A lot of us can relate. It was hectic. I didn't see it coming. I had plans. I had future plans. And that sort of was the biggest obstacle in my life now. And I thought, wait, I could either take this and completely derail, or I could actually just use this as an instrument. And now I don't have a choice but to get out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Because now you're almost pushed out of your comfort zone. So we know you can cook well. We know you can host well. What does your business do? So I started off, because it was lockdown, I started with catering. Mm -hmm. I was like, what better way to start bringing in income and playing around with food within catering? Did the catering for a few months, and it really worked out with the levels, certain levels where you, they wanted to have restaurants open. So it was really going, it was like going great. COVID to your advantage. Yes. Now. So it, it pushed you into a corner. You're taking this. Take exactly. Now you've turned around and see how can COVID now work for you? Exactly. And a friend of mine, Rashida, we went into that. Rashida from come and dine with me. So okay. I kept all those foodie links. And in the world, I feel like I really need to have all of these links with friendships. Start and networking. <laughs> <laughs> network as well. You have to network. Yeah. And that didn't work out for a while because all of a sudden people wanted to go out now again. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so you need to have. We have different levels of what you can do with food, and my love for food is fast. So, couldn't do the catering anymore. What else do I love doing? Mm. So, I had all of these campaigns that I would do for major brands in South Africa. And what I've, what I've also seen, because I've been checking your social, you've also been giving food to people that didn't even have food. Yes, so. And I think that's quite a hard, like a hearty thing for you to do. You start in the business, you have the skill of cooking, and now you also start dishing out. Food, you're giving more. Yeah, I have this thing as well where a lot of people feel, and I don't say don't do this, but mm. people feel that homeless people deserve leftovers mm. or just a loaf of bread, dry piece of bread, or whatever you can you add a takeaway and you just give it to them. And I just feel like I'm going to give them what I would serve guests at my dinner party. That's lovely. I think that's, that's such a cool thing of giving them the best. Yeah. Actually, if you want to get food from India, you want the best. <laughs> Check him out on social because we can continue that conversation and check out more of your journey around you and your food business. I definitely want your business to get out there because I think that's amazing. And yeah. we're going to come back after the ad break and discuss more around the challenges you face as an entrepreneur. And then on all these issues you touched on that are not being able to continue the same work that you've been doing and all these things. But thanks, guys. I'll see you after this break. to see you again on Being the Business. I am Jamie thurston Margaret, and we've been having an amazing discussion with Imtia Zahn, who worked in corporate and then went through to follow his passion, which is food and been in this food business. Um, I don't even know the name of your, what is the name of your business, Imtia? Okay, so I started a Facebook page and an Instagram page called I Heart Life, my name being Imtia Heart, I Heart Life. Thought I was going to play around with lifestyle, inspire, food, entertainment, so I left that as just like an option when I started it out last year. Now I feel like the focus point is more myself, so I'm, I am my own brand, basically. I like how you've, you had all the ideas of where to yeah. go with this, but then you started zoning it in to who you are. And why was that? Why didn't you just be the wild everything? Did something make you realize you need to focus yeah, on it? Yes, something changed. I realized that a lot of people out there know me more for being on TV shows, the cooking shows, and you sort of are that person, you are MTR's heart. That's where they mm -hmm. remember you from. So take that brand and then start selling that mm -hmm. because you're already known for that. So utilize that and oh, then nice. pull people in through that. And that's what I started doing and started getting campaigns and I started doing recipe and content development for a few brands. Oh, nice. And that's, cool. that's when I realized you can do this mm -hmm. all year round, lockdown restrictions, anything aside, like. All I have to do is just have my kitchen, Yeah. have my ideas, and just th throw it down. I want to kind of unpack a bit here. People often talk about entrepreneurship and how good partnerships are. You've mentioned before you had a partnership with another, um, another I would say it's another celebrity, a food celebrity. 
but it didn't work out for you. So can you just go through what was your personal journey around partnerships and how that worked or didn't work for you? Partnerships is, it can either work for you or it can't. If you both come in with different ideas as to where you want the business to go or grow towards, that's when you're gonna have that clash. So you either have to both be on board and on the same page. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you just take your stride in a different direction because to bump heads all the time is just never going so to be So is it a case of just bumping heads? And what happened that made you decide this isn't okay? Because often you can, you can bump heads but you can work it out. Um, and I'm not trying to be specific around you and maybe, I don't know how you work, maybe you're the, the <laughs> bad person, but how do you deal in this conflict situation? Because a lot of people get into situations where they can't deal with who they're working with. And for you, you said, okay, you, you cut in ties, but what was the resolve that you got out of this? Are you guys still friends? No, we're great friends, and the ties I'm cutting was just that I didn't want to do with that specific thing anymore. So this was her thing. She brought me in. She assisted mm -hmm. me. She said, use my platform. And I got a lot of great feedback from the customers and mm -hmm. the food. And I decided as an individual, as a person, this is not where I see myself going. Mm -hmm. I do not want to do food catering. I see myself somewhere else. I want to go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say that if you don't have the same goal in mind, you can't continue on the same route. I so think that's a very key point over there around if you can have the same goal as your partner, things work out. Things work but out. But when your goals aren't aligned, and there's a little workshop that I've done before where I say stand back to back, and you can tell both people, standing back to back, take a step forward. But if your step forward is in different directions, directions. you're not going to end up on the same place. You will never. You think you're going forward. They think they're going forward. But because you're not aligned to where you're going, you're not going to be on the same place. Exactly. And I think that's a nice takeaway from even listening to your story of how that's worked out for you. What I also want to mention, the tough thing of you following your passion instead of getting another job. How did your family take that? How did your, your, your partner take that? Because now it's a case of you're not guaranteed this financial income from your career. And following a passion project, I know that in some households and some parents, um, not that's not the easy thing to do. So how, how did it work in your case? So I'm fortunate and blessed with the fact that I've been retrenched. So number one, when you're retrenched, you get a package. Mm. But I took that package and I put it away for a rainy day, basically, and I took it from scratch. So everything that I did in the lockdown with the catering and with the content development for the different brands. I use all of that money and I kept it aside. So now you can't go spending as mm. much as you used to. And I'm lucky that my partner stood behind me, gave me a timeline as well, said, I'm all for you following your passions and dreams, but you know, after a certain time, if nothing is actually gonna come in, mm. you need to reestablish whether or not this is going to be profitable enough for you to How do. How did that make you feel though, of someone telling you, of you being dependent on yourself and having your own salary, someone telling you, you only have this amount of, I'm sure they did it with all the love in their heart, and I'm sure they did it with you in mind and kidney in mind. Exactly. But someone telling you, you have until so long, and if it doesn't work out, you need to make another plan. Look, we all want to follow our dreams, and we all want to follow our passions, and we all wish it was a perfect world where if I was a soccer player, I want to one day be in Manchester United State. Mm. I mean, good for you, you're a great soccer player, but are you really going to end up there? Like, we really need to, s you really need to think Yeah, we, we all have that story of, I was going to go pro, but I had an ankle injury. Yeah. <laughs> and the same with me. So you really need to think far ahead. You really need to focus on the fact that an entrepreneur, at the end of the day, wants to be a profitable business. Mm. And if in a certain time period you can't create any profits, then go back to the drawing board, think of new ideas, mm. but find something that can bring in money because we have to survive. Yeah. At the end yeah. of the day, we have to survive. <laughs> That's really the truth around entrepreneurship. It's okay to want to go and do things, yeah. whether it's passion, whether it's a new idea. But the key is validate your idea, validate yeah. your concept, and prove that if I do this, is it going to offset my cost and expense? Because even for you to think of an idea and to implement the idea is taking up energy and exactly. time and resources. And as an entrepreneur, you need to think as all the resources and time and content and whatever I'm doing, putting into this. And in your case, when it comes to food, you're making physical things. Exactly. If that food doesn't sell, it gets old. Then you, you, you come at the loss. And it's a lot of things to keep in mind. And I'm sure there are so many people also good at cooking. I saw so many people started cooking now because of COVID. Everybody Everyone is now a professional chef. I've been seeing on the gram <laughs> how they're doing this. But it's a case of turning that thing, that skill into a business makes it a completely different story. Exactly, and I literally went into social on social media. I was in everybody's DMs, like I was really hustling, and it's all about hustling, because mm, I decided mm. this is the direction I want to go. I want to now create recipes, I want to do the content for the social media posts for big brands, and 
going, you have to actually ask. You no, can't just, me. nothing is going to fall on your lap, so you really need to go out there, ask, you'll get a hundred no's, and if that one yes, that's all you need, you give your all in that campaign, do great yeah. work, and from there, it's a ripple effect, because other brands start seeing that, yes. and they notice your skill, and that's how you get out there. Yeah. And I was lucky enough. That's that persistence, that. MTRs. It's a case of, you kept on working, because of your passion, people can start identifying your passion, and especially big brands, they start seeing, hey, we can exactly. see what this guy is doing. And I think this applies to any business. You can start seeing what these, what these entrepreneurs are doing. And with them implementing and engaging in things, you start pulling things together. Exactly. And this is just a, 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 it's a case of where energy is drawn. If you can see where your energy is going, and I can see where your energy is going, you kind of get drawn to energy. I'm sure we can all relate to that. When we see people succeeding, 100%. or it looks like they're succeeding, we want to get drawn and want to get pulled into to the success. I think this is really an, a, a story we can definitely take online. So from people outside there, if you want to have any food stories or your food business or any other tips and tricks you want to find from NTRs, check him out on social media. And when we come back, we're going to talk about more tips of how he can help you with your business. Thanks. Welcome back to Be In The Business. I am Jamie Thurston Margaret, and we're sitting with Imtiaz Hart, who's been doing the most around food. He's been, from, from the beginning to end, it's about following passion. I and mean, we've been discussing how you can do your 9 to 5, your nine to five and things can happen where you lose your 9 to 5. And then it's about making a decision of, do you just get another job, or do you follow your passion? And in Imtiaz's case, you've been telling us more about all the support you've been having and the networks that you built. And I want to discuss more about how you were able to solve these things and how you see the success of your business. Because you could have given up a long time ago. You told us how you were given the timeline. And I'm sure in that space, you could have seen what works and what doesn't work. And yes, we've seen you say how you've even pivoted within your journey of saying, okay, I'm doing catering. Catering worked for a certain time. And then Uncle Sil said, oh, things are open, things are closed. And you kept shifting your business. That, I think, is a nice key point around this. And I want to discuss, how do you know when to make that decision? When do you know when to pivot, when to change your business direction? I think you start realizing when profits are starting to go down immediately. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. You, you, I always like do, ex okay, I'm very OCD with a lot of things. So when I did the catering, I had this Excel spreadsheets of everything. And I could see that. And I have this thing in mind that the business should grow every week. So mm. even if it's just by 1%, it's growth. And if you start seeing it going down, in that direction, you have to start making other plans. Are we going to sell different things? Are we going to change the food? Are we going to change the marketing strategy? Are we going to change our clients? Look, I went through everything, and you yeah. have to do all of these things, and you have to go through everything and analyze it in depth before you make the final decision of just dropping it. What, what did you do before, before you did food? <laughs> because <laughs> this doesn't sound like a, a conventional <laughs> skill that any entrepreneur has. has. And, and was it something you did in your in It's your just leading work? up, like when... I wanted to venture into food and become my own boss. Mm -hmm. I read up on a lot of articles. Because that's, that's, that's really an entrepreneurship You just have yeah. to like, educate yourself. You're going into a field where you basically are unaware of what's going to happen. So empower yourself by getting knowledge no, within that comes, field. Come serve. Where did you, what did you Google? Because <laughs> just for you to be able to put that implementation plan together of knowing, yeah. I know I'm making money. I'm able to watch my business grow. And then also be able to make the decision of, okay, is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? And by when it goes down, what do I do now? Do you then look at what's making my business go down? And in your case, there were a lot of external factors. But I think just the practice of monitoring your business is something that other entrepreneurs should take. Because if you're not checking and keeping the tab and keeping your finger on the pulse, you won't know where you're going. You won't know where you're going. That's the important thing. You need to see where you're going because I always want growth and I want it to grow into a successful business one day, obviously. No, definitely. Where I am now, I have a few... Like, everybody has goals set in this specific field. Mine is to bring out a cookbook now. So that's the next thing. I'm nice. implementing that. It's definitely going to happen. I'm just going to choose which recipes are I going to go I want to talk about this thing of goals. Everyone says, oh, we've got goals. We're setting goals. So you know you've got your business now, which is your main baby. You're saying you've got these goals. How are you managing to take your steps into these goals? And with the goals... How, how tangible or far-fetched do you feel like you're making these goals? So you got to make it tangible. You can't go far-fetched. I can't say, okay, I'm opening a restaurant at the end of this year. It's not which, going to Which some people say. Which I would not say. <laughs> <laughs> because I do not believe in these fantasy dreams. Mm, I believe mm. in 
dreams that I can actually make a reality. And I know that you need capital for things like that, so I have a plan for a restaurant. Mm. I have a savings plan in that, and that will be at the age of 40 years old when it sure. matures. So th there is so a plan. So another 50 years for you. Another okay. 10 years for me. <laughs> <laughs> the restaurant is definitely opening in 10 years. Without a doubt, okay. that is happening. I have saved up for that, so that's happening. Prior to that, I've decided that this year I want a cookbook out, and then in another five years, I want a follow-up cookbook. Okay. I'm also going to Capsicum Culinary School. So you've no. now enrolled? I haven't enrolled. I actually you won the competition. Oh, yes. So okay. I won a one-year bursary. So nice. So the competition that they were hosting, and I won. So Quite that deserving. is a step in the right direction. It's going to give me the techniques and the skills that I need to write the cookbook and then mm -hmm. eventually man my own restaurant one day. So we've got to always, like I said, empower yourself. And mm -hmm. I like out. this. I like how you set out your goals where you know these are long-term goals, but it's not just a case of, like you're saying, you're so realistic about it that you've also learned of what do I need exactly. to be able to achieve the goal. I know that for me to write this cookbook, I need to actually have the technique. So now you've got your technique in place. There's a, there's a thing that I also do around this concept of setting out goals, and the main thing is setting out your time. How do I set out time towards working towards these goals? There's a, a 20, 10, and 70% way of how I work out time. 70% of your time you spend on what, what I hold and what I advise people is you spend on where your money is coming from right now. This is your main goals, 70% of your time goes here. 20% of your time you go according to a midterm goal, like in your case, your cookbook. 10% of your time you go according to working towards a long term goal, like your restaurant, for instance. And as you, you move through the times, when you start making more money in your next, so you're running all these things simultaneously. You're making 70% of your money, in your, you're making 100% of money in 70% of time. But once you start making money in 20%, and that amount of money starts equating in the 70%, you start shifting. You start upgrading. You're now saying, okay, now my cookbook is out. Now my restaurant is going to be taking 20% of my time, and I can make another long-term goal. And by what I've learned is by partitioning these things in this way, you just keep growing your money starts increasing. And with that finger on the pulse, you can see how things are moving up and down. Definitely. So I definitely see how things all come together when you can put this plan together. And that's a big thing entrepreneurs need to know is plan. And planning. we've heard this before. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Prior popper planning prevents poor performance. Oh, yes, my tongue is really <laughs> twisted. <laughs> I just hear poppers, 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 food, food, food. Give me that chili poppers. But what I want to, what I want to touch on now, MTRs, is if you could go back in time or if you could speak to your younger self, what kind of entrepreneurship advice would you give to MTRs? Well, I would just tell myself to push, follow your passion, allow mm. yourself to let the universe take you to where you need to be. Because everything that happened in my life happened for a reason. I wouldn't Definitely. change anything. I wouldn't want my younger self to change anything. I feel like I am the way I am today because of everything I went through. Mm, mm. You know, that's quite powerful words, and that's, that's also a case of acceptance, where a lot of people feel like, I don't want this life, I don't deserve this, what's, what's going on with me? But when you turn it around and see how you've accepted this, you start seeing also the value in this. So I like how you've taken your journey, and I think this can also all go online. There's more conversation, there's more food. If I'm sure you, there's even, I know your recipes are out there. So if you want to get that recipes, if you want to get that food tips, if you want to get even, come buy some food from Intiaz, who's the, literally I would say one of the best cooks in South Africa, one of the best <laughs> chefs in South Africa, get him on, on social media. You can also continue the discussion with us online and this is being the business with Jamie Thurston Margaret. I'll see you next week. Thank you.